You want me to shut the door? I gotta know now. Okay, I'm gonna roll. Do you think Howdy is okay? I wanna say Howdy, it's your boy. Howdy, it's your boy. As the title says, Ectochrome is beautiful. Ectochrome is an interesting one. They used Ectochrome on season two of Euphoria, and I personally thought it looked beautiful. Here we have Ectochrome that was also processed in the same way that they processed it, which results in kind of the image that you see here where it has some weird colors. I have kind of just a base, very quick corrections here, and we can see a bit of the green that's kind of within that stock. We can see it here in her hair, balancing out the color from there, some contrast, and just kind of moving around the colors a little bit. I have a different project where I spent more time on this, which is probably what you'll see anytime I cut to footage. It's a beautiful stock because of the underlying look in the film itself. Ectochrome has much lower dynamic range than Vision 3 and is a little harder to shoot. I was constantly metering everything. This light, I didn't care if it was clipping, but this, I did not want it to be just a glowing mess. I wanted to see the tubes and have them not be clipping. I metered these lights and dialed them in so that they would not be more than like a stop or two above her skin. For this shot, we pulsed the key light, as you can see here, just a quick shot where it pulses when she walks towards the camera. At its brightest, I metered her face and set the camera exactly to that stop. So there's an extra added process when shooting film and especially ectochrome because it's lower dynamic range where you need to really make sure everything is dialed in. And something like a pulsing, very bright key light right in the talent's face is something that needs to be considered more closely than if you were shooting digital or like a high dynamic range vision three. So let's see this shot is dark right here when the light is off and this is what it's like right off the camera. So no matter what corrections we do, we have this underlying bluish tone in the brighter areas and you know it's a bit greenish blue which we can see in the, the like the mid-range kind of and if we just let's say we reset this and we're starting with this at a first look on film i'll just especially when we're shooting on a white background like this i will just grab this and white balance to the back and then i can add some contrast here through our color wheels and just kind of get this to a point that's okay for just quick viewing and then maybe bump the saturation a little bit she we can see how green everything is i'll pull some green out of the mid-tones and that is looking pretty balanced right there it's similar to the video that i shot when we shot tungsten stock exterior what well, was interior but it was lit with only sunlight where you can easily grade it and push it around to get it to where you want it to be but it's different than shooting a daylight stock in daylight as you have the underlying tones of the film still in the image and that is even more evident when shooting ectochrome and it just kind of creates something i mean we can see here this is three nodes very quickly and has a very filmic look obviously with barely any adjustments whatsoever quick balance to make white white contrast and just pulling a little bit of green out three nodes and it's in a very acceptable place which is something that i really like about shooting film where like the look is already in the film talked about them before and I'll talk about them again. The music that you just heard is from Audio, Audio with Two Eyes. A couple things that set them apart. One is Link Match AI. You can take a link from Spotify or YouTube or a couple others and paste it into Audio's site and it will return music from their library that sounds and, and feels like that song that you pasted. Now when I look for music and even for the music you've heard a couple times in this video, I have used Link Match AI pulling songs from playlists that are many years old. I paste that song in, get a bunch of results from audio that feel the same, and then 
put that song in my video and it saves a lot of time. Second thing, they now have stems, which is huge because you can get any part of the song that you want. If you just want the guitar, you can take just the guitar. You can download all the stems and then you have seven or eight layers of music. They also have, for February only, a lifetime plan for $199. Doesn't include Link Match AI or stems, but that's okay if you want a lifetime of music and sound effects for 200 bucks. So links for both of those below. Thank you, Audio, for working with me and making my life easier. Heart emoji. So you wanna go, you wanna ride with the big dogs. This has a very beautiful look that I love a lot. And let's see right here, this is kind of cool. The whole premise of these shots was to be in a studio, but I may have brought down the exposure a little too much here. So I'm just gonna bring it back up to get some of those details back. And again, this is what we're looking at right off the scan. And this is just a very quick grade. It has a very beautiful look to it. And I love it. Despite me being a four perf guy, I did shoot three perf on this, which if you don't know, you can see three perfs here, which makes a 16.9 image. I am just going to scale this up to show the full frame without any of the perfs and also i have this scanned at 6.5k so it's very like you can really get in there there's a lot of room to zoom in and out and we can even see a bit of halation in her eyes which looks cool so i'm going to reset this back to full and look at that that's what it looks like off of the scan so as mentioned before this was processed in ecn2 which is the same way you process color negative like vision 3 and that creates this greenish bluish underlying tone to the film which is what they did in euphoria and i like the way that looked so that's what i did here also it was a little bit easier because i was anxious and wanted to film back as fast as possible obviously so the lab that i went to would have had to send it somewhere else to have it processed as a positive but after talking with them and doing some research and debating i chose to do it like this and really the thing that made me do it was in the lab when i was discussing this with them and trying to visualize what the difference would be the lab tech said not too many people are processing this like this and once he said that i'm like okay let's do that because if not too many people are doing it i was interested in having something that looked different than what most were doing. I am happy with the look. I love it. And I love shooting on film for kind of a couple reasons, but the biggest one is the process of actually shooting on film, which I did discuss in a previous video. But with Ektachrome specifically, the process even gets a little more specific. And I like being specific. And I like being in a scenario where if I'm not being specific, I will not succeed because it forces you to not rush and to not just be like whatever you have to visualize with a meter what your scene is going to look like because you cannot see exposure on a film camera you are looking through the eyepiece and looking through the lens so it's it's just like if i'm looking with my eyes you can't really tell if a camera is going to be exposed properly if i'm just looking at a scene with my eyes. So really being persistent with the meter and having a really good understanding of what you're doing is key and makes the process more fun. And also, in my opinion, gives a better final product. I can then use those experiences to kind of transfer that precision into shooting on digital, which then helps the digital final product be better. So if you ever have the chance to shoot on film, I would say definitely take that opportunity because it will translate into how you work when shooting digital and your work may become better. Also, I do think it's wise to do a test or to have somebody that really knows what they're doing before you shoot an entire project on film. You should know what you're doing, but a little test never hurts. You can also get Vision 3 or Ektachrome and put it in a stills role and shoot stills with it and then have them develop it how they would develop motion picture film so that you can run your tests without having it cost hundreds of dollars per minute and you could just take one shot at a time and generate some type of insight on how to expose and how the film behaves cut to some footage so you wanna go you wanna hide underneath Okay, so one other thing that we can look at is kind of how this looks straight off the camera compared to Vision 3. So this is Vision 3 stock. At the moment, I don't know which stock this is, but if I find it within me to check after this, I will put it in text on the screen. And we can see the scopes right here, and then we can see the scopes in 
ectochrome. These are different lighting scenarios, but we can just kind of see the differences here. This has a natural feel to it, like a warmth, and this has like a colder, greener, grittier look to it. And this can definitely be pushed around a lot and is more forgiving. Uh, this must be 500T. So while I love Ectochrome, I also love the Vision 3 stocks because there is a lot more latitude there and having a lot of highlight range is pretty fun and you can really push these stocks around, which I will get into soon on this channel along with the other million ideas that I have in my notes for videos that I want to share that are interesting. Okay, that's all I got for now. Peace. So you wanna go, you wanna find other options. Got yourself a new little friend and now you're cold